hello, Southgate Church House Springs. I hope everybody is staying healthy and doing well, and also that you are enjoying our Bible reading. I know it's been a lot of growth just for Kelsey and I to be able to read through all the chapters uh, a lot of times together and be able to dialogue about questions we have and what the Lord might be speaking to us. So I thought for my devotional, I'd just talk about one of the kind of some of the main things that Kelsey and I have been discussing and praying about as we've been reading the scriptures. Uh, so before we do that, I'll start by opening in prayer. So Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you're wanting to speak to us as we're reading through your word during specifically during this pandemic. Um, so we just pr pray that you would prepare our hearts to be good soil to receive your word, that it would take root in our hearts, and that it would grow and it would yield the harvest, in Jesus' name. Um, so one of the things Kelsey and I have been talking about a lot as we're praying through the scriptures about Jesus calling his disciples, and then some of the interactions with the different disciples, has been their personalities. And specifically, how could your personality affect your relationship with Jesus, how you respond to things he says, and even the experiences that you get to have. And that came up because we were thinking through how there are certain things that only some disciples got to experience, or Jesus would pull just a few away. Like for the Transfiguration, Jesus just picked Peter, James, and John to be the three to go up and get to experience that. And Peter and Andrew were brothers and so that got me thinking well what if me and my brother were following Jesus and then he took my brother up for this incredible experience and I was left out just thinking through oh well how did Jesus decide who would go with him for some of those things and was there something different about their faith or their maybe even their personality that lended towards having those experiences with Jesus and then that kind of led us to thinking about Peter as maybe a prime example for thinking through that because Peter experienced some things that no other disciples did, some being real high highs and some being real low lows. And if I compare my personality to Peter, I think it's probably stark opposites because Peter was very quick to speak and very quick to act. So if we think about some of those things from the scriptures, and being quick to act, in Matthew 14, uh, Peter was the one to walk on water. And from the gospel, the only account we have of a human walking on water was Peter. He was the only disciple. And he had the faith to just act, to step out on the water. Um, on the flip side of that, looking in John 18, and being quick to act when soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden, Peter was the one to pull out his sword and cut off the soldier's ear. And Jesus said, Peter, put your sword away. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. Thinking about being quick to speak, um, in Matthew chapter 16, we see back to back two different stories with Peter that are pretty unique experiences with Jesus. Um, the first one is Jesus had just asked the question to the crowd and to the Pharisees, who do you think I am? And then he then asked the same questions to his disciples. He said, who do you say I am? And Peter is the first one to respond before any of the other disciples. And he says, you are the Messiah, you are the Christ. And then in verse 17, Jesus replies and he says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So that was a, it was a bold statement for Peter to just come out and say it. You are the Christ, and he had that revelation. And in turn, there was a reaction from Jesus as a, a blessing. Like, yes, you were the one to speak it. And then there's a prophecy then about Peter. But then in the very next section, uh, in verse 21 of chapter 16, Jesus is telling the disciples about his coming death. Um, 
and Peter takes him aside and says, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. So in this case, uh, Peter being the first to just speak uh, and not take some time to maybe think about it uh, and pray about what the Lord was speaking maybe was a hindrance. And Jesus even said, You were a stumbling block to me. Uh, whereas just in a few scriptures before, Jesus had said, You will be the foundation stone on which I will build my church. And so looking at those things with Peter, um, it's not a one is good and one is bad. Uh, we are both supposed to be slow to speak and slow to anger. And at the same time, we are supposed to be bold. Um, looking at a couple of scriptures there, we read in James 1, 19. It says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Similarly, in Matthew 14, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees about what makes a man unclean, and he again goes back to the heart of it's not what goes into a man's mouth that makes him unclean, but it's what comes out of his mouth. So we are supposed to be very careful with what we say and be slow to speak and slow to anger. But at the same time, we are also supposed to boldly approach the throne of grace. We're supposed to step out in faith. And Jesus said, if you have faith, even as big as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move and it will move. Um, so knowing those things, Kelsey and I started thinking more about how could our own personality and our own comfort zone affect how we respond to Jesus in some of these different areas. I think for my own personality, I'm a person that doesn't want to be uh, forefront and in everyone's view. And so part of that is I am slower to speak. I'm also very analytical and I like to think through things and process them before I give a response. And that lends itself to being slow to speak and being slow to anger. And that is an area where I could see, okay, based on my personality, I might excel in some of those. But there's a flip side to that too, where unlike Peter, I'm not generally the first person to put myself in an uncomfortable position and be the first to speak or the first to act or take a very bold stance. And what I felt like the Lord was telling me specifically in this time was during the pandemic, I am calling you to step out in faith. Put yourself in an uncomfortable position. Pray bold prayers that maybe you otherwise wouldn't pray and have faith that I'm going to do them. That if you ask, seek, and knock, I'm going to answer your prayers. And so I hope that's an encouragement for any of you that wherever you're at, uh, think about where are areas that, based on the giftings the Lord has given me or the personality that I have, that I might excel in some areas. But there are other ones that unless I really am intentional about stepping out of my comfort zone in those areas, that I'm not going to be able to walk into some of the things the Lord has called me. And I may miss out on some of the experiences that Peter got to have with Jesus that the other disciples didn't. Uh, so I pray as you are reading uh, the scripture readings for these coming weeks that the Lord puts those things on your heart and that you are willing to step out and do what he's called you. Be blessed.